Decades in the making, a major scientific breakthrough has been achieved. Nuclear ignition. Humans have now replicated the process of how the sun makes energy on Earth. This paves the way for national defense advancements and a clean energy future. The first to achieve this is the National Ignition Facility in California. We spoke with one of the leading women behind this monumental moment about what it was like for her to help make this dream a reality. I'm Annie Kreitcher. I'm the principal designer for the experiment, and I'm also the team lead for modeling of these experiments in the ICF program at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. My role was to design the input conditions um, to the experiment, such as the target and laser specifications, um, the, the desired specifications. Um, this includes things like the target geometry, what the target's made out of, how, the dimensions of the target. And also for the laser power, we don't just hit the target with all the laser energy at once. We actually define very specific powers at very specific times to get to the right plasma conditions. Um, so to achieve the conditions that are required for ignition, it requires quite a bit of this design optimization and finesse. Um, and so imagine harnessing the energy of 192 giant laser beams to drive a mini star in the lab that's the size of a human hair, um, and also making it round at the percent level, um, quite challenging. Uh, so uh, we are able to reach pressures of more than two times the center of the sun and temperatures about five times the center of the sun through these design optimizations. Um, and there is a couple of main uh, changes to the design versus the prior record holder uh, experiment in 2021. There's a laser bay and the whole uh, facility is the size of three football fields put together. So it's, it's huge. And the laser beam lines um, span that, uh, that distance and you can tour it. It's not a place that um, designers or experimentalists you know, have fun walking around and during the shot cycle or on any normal day, um, they, they keep it very pristine. And so the people that maintain the laser are really the people that mostly have access. But you can do a, um, a tour and it's one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. It, it's just huge. Um, so that all those laser beams get focused down uh, inside of a, a chamber, a spherical chamber, and that's about 10 meters in diameter. And then in the center of that chamber sits a one centimeter long can. And so we, we shine all the laser beams onto that one centimeter long can. Um, and inside of that can sits a two millimeter uh, diameter BB. Uh, and that contains the fusion fuel. Um, so we compress and heat uh, that the fuel inside of that two millimeter size BB down to the size of a plasma that's the size of a human hair. Um, so that's how we get what, what we need for fusion ignition is energy density. And, uh, and that's how we do it. So actually following COVID, uh, the, ex the physics team doesn't go typically um, into the control room or on site. And so um, since I'm a designer, I sort of set the, the input conditions to the experiment well ahead of the experiment, like at least um, finalized a week before the experiment. Um, and now the experimental team also doesn't have to be there. So it's it's really the facility folks that are there on the day of. But um, the experimental, my experimental counterpart was um, up all night manning the, the experiment. Um, and also I was on call. So at, at one in the morning, he's sending texts out that, oh, looking pretty good. Um, of course, I was kind of in and out of sleep state at that point. Um, and because there was no emergency, he didn't call me, he just sent an attack. So um, I actually woke up a few hours later and saw it on my phone and it was it was just like the best feeling. I, I, I can't even describe it, just all the years of work and we finally reached this goal, um, especially with all of the, the criticisms of NIF and, and that sort of thing. What does it feel like to be part of something that's decades worth of research? And I think that's it's also really awesome to be able to be part of the team that, that brought this home. I mean, it's been it was proposed 60 years ago, right after the invention of the laser. Um, and we've come, come so far since then in both the design and what we think we'll need to achieve ignition, as well as the laser development. It's it's huge. And so um, to bring this to the point that they dreamed of 
60 years ago. It's just a huge honor for the team. And I actually got to shake Knuckle, John Knuckle's hand um, in August of 2021, last time when we got the, the record experiment. Um, that was super memorable for me. So we talked a lot about fusion energy and the fusion energy that was produced was more than the laser energy that was used to drive the target. And that's gaining more than one. Um, but we don't talk a lot about the power. Um, so the fusion power that comes out of this miniature explosion is 25,000 times the entire US electrical grid capacity. Um, so 30 quadrillion watts, um, but only for a very short period of time. And it's about the time it takes light to travel one inch. So um, that's about uh, 90 trillionths of a second. <laughs> I think it's really special to be part of such a big multidisciplinary team with uh, such complex systems and everything has to kind of come together all at the same time. Everyone has a different role to play. Um, and so this sort of builds a, com a camaraderie. We have a, um, a, sh a shared sense of fate and joy when things are working. It's, it's really, um, really special. and and also collectively playing together to figure out when something isn't working and how to fix it and supporting each other. Um, I mean, there's the, the laser delivery team has to come into play, the target fabrication team, the experimental um, team, the diagnostic team, um, the design teams. And so it's quite a, a fun uh, experience um, to see that all come together. I've actually always had a love for math. So, um, you know, back in high school, it was like, that was the one thing that sort of made sense to me. Um, and also engineering. So I'm from Michigan and there's a lot of, you know, engineering is very popular there. Um, so then when I went to the University of Michigan, I was looking around at the different departments and I saw, well, this is an engineering department, the nuclear engineering department, which also has a lot of complex physics and math associated with it um, and the possibility for you know, helping society. Um, so that, that kind of got me kick-started. And then um, my summer intern out here at the Livermore Lab actually <clears throat> got me really interested in the NIF. And when I saw what, what kind of uh, cool stuff you could do with lasers hitting targets and the conditions that you could make miniature stars in the laboratory, um, I just thought it was such an awesome project to work on. Um, and I had a lot of encouragement from my family and my, my friends. They, they thought, also thought it was really just a cool project. And so um, I think the thing that's kept me here also all these years is um, just, you know, the idea that we're working on something that could change humanity um, and but not just in one way, in a couple of different ways. So we can support the nation's um, stockpile as well as trying to um, make a first step towards a, a clean energy future. <laughs>